Hi, this is Cheryl. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create these pendants um, using the Tiffany um, stained glass method of um, stain putting together the glass and the soldering. So we will start off with using microscope slides and I'm using a knitting gauge ruler, but you can use any kind of ruler. Um, the slides are three inches long, so I want to cut them in half. So that would be about a one and a half inches. So I'm marking my slide and I will be cutting it um, in half. So I have my silver sharpie and I marked the halfway point. And I will use my glass cutter and some cu glass cutting oil. You just need to moisten the blade, the wheel in the glass cutter. And we're not cutting the glass, we're just going to score it. Glass cutters do not cut glass, they score the glass. We'll score that right at the halfway point. And then we will use our running pliers and break them in half, but you can break them in half by putting a thumb on each side and breaking it as if you were breaking a cookie. So I had some watercolor sheets that I had done. Um, a couple strips were left over and I used those as my backgrounds. And I'm creating some little art pieces to go under the slides. So if you're a card maker or you do paperwork, you might have these little sayings. Um, you can use those. You could do anything really. Um, paint, draw, whatever you like to do to put a little art piece under the glass. So I'm using a Micron permanent marker to outline my sketch of a ribbon. And I'm going to make the Hope um, Cancer Awareness Pendant using some Arteza um, brush markers and again you can you, you can create just about any kind of artwork um, in a mini miniature form because you're going to be wearing these as pendants doing some art work right now and getting this one finished up if you like to do um, paper crafts you can use your die cuts and cut out little shapes and forms and put them under and be creative with it now this is watercolor paper that I had done a little watercolor on and I'm enhancing some of the um, design in the watercolor with my permanent marker and creating a little flower. And again, using the Artega um, brush markers, it has a little brush on the end. Give it a little color. And I have a white Posca pen. I'm adding little white dots in there. Create my artwork. And lastly, I use my green Sharpie marker to add in the leaves and again for my third one I am going to just use the design of the watercolor and create a flower and add a little silver center 
and this one I decided to put a couple pieces of stained glass on either side so now I'm going to go fast through this this is the foiling use copper foil tape and this is 7 30 seconds in width I wanted my border to not be too thick on the edges um, this is what holds everything together and creates the foundation for your solder work trim up any overlapping and you want to burnish all the sides with something like a pencil or I'm using a clay tool um, and rub the tape onto the glass work to be sure that there's good adhesion there because you don't want any loose bits um, that will show up in your solder work so we're going through this rather quickly and on this piece I have to do the stained glass pieces and the center artwork piece Now with the um, the Hope pendant, I used a bit thicker um, foil tape. It's 5 16 I believe, and it gives you a more chunkier um, effect in the end with the solder work. Trimming up some overlapping. So we have our flux and a brush to adhere the flux to the pieces clean the copper with I'm using lead free solder because these are pieces that people will wear on their person and you do not want to expose them to lead so I'm going to put my three pieces together and just like stained glass you want to tack them so that they don't move about flux on there and I'm using my Hakko FX601 um, soldering iron and I'm just placing a dot uh, at the joints just to hold the piece together while I do my solder work so you want to tin the entire air uh, front and back of these pieces and that's basically apply, applying a coat of solder on um, all of the copper pe copper tape. Put your flux down. Now remember, these pieces get very hot. Um, the copper tape and the glass will conduct the heat so don't touch it after you've been just soldering the key to soldering is just keeping a nice smooth flow and you'll see I'll continue to um, check my work and make sure it's nice and smooth as I go along And I'm going to put my rubber glove on so that I don't get burnt. Now we need to do the edges. And you want a nice rounded bead to flow across the top, you know, all across the sides of each piece. So to do that, you want to hold your piece horizontal and let gravity help you with the beading on the sides. course this video is sped up so you want to take your time with this 
and let the solder set up before you flip. Otherwise, you could have some dripping happening. So I'm not going to show you everything with the Hope piece because the Hope piece and the Alive piece are um, actually the same uh, process. So we'll solder up the Alive piece. Uh, I'm going to tin it first. Coat everything with some solder. My soldering iron was giving me some trouble. It was dirty, so I needed to clean it. I'm always looking for ways to incorporate my art into my jewelry pieces and I like to do stained glass work and this combines all three. Jewelry, painting, and stained glass work. I'm using some 18 gauge copper wire. It's bare, it has no coatings on it. It will not, this process will not work if there's a coating on it. I have a round nose pliers, bent nose pliers, and my flush cutting cutters. You wanna start off with a nice straight cut and use your round nose pliers to do, make your design work, your decorative pieces. I'm using my flush ends on the, the uh, coil, coiled side of the wire and bending the wire into the desired decorative piece, making sure it's going to sit flat on the pendant. Cut the end flat and do the same thing for the next piece. Sorry, it's a little bit off camera. putting some flux on the pieces and I need to tack them first. Hold them in place with a tweezer and tack them. Now I can do the tin work and the design work for the um, embellishments of the pendant. Now on the sides here, I'm taking a little bit of solder and I'm gently dropping the solder onto the piece to give it its organic embellishments. I 
and again the hope pendant was done exactly the same way as the alive pendant my soldering gun needs to be iron i should say need, needed to be cleaned and a little bit of flux applied in order for it to work making sure that everything is nice and smooth before I do the embellishments on this piece. Again, using the wire, I'm making the um, some wavy um, patterns to go along the top and bottom of the pendant. Using my round nose pliers, I'm just bending the wire back and forth and creating a little bit of a vine wave type pattern with the copper wire. tweezers in place and tacking and then tinning the wire itself. Sorry, it's a bit off camera, but I'm just bending the wire back and forth with the round nose pliers to create the wave. Now you see sometimes these are a bit fiddly so they kind of move out of place like this just did and if that happens just heat up your solder and remove the piece and reposition it. And then I needed to clean up the edge because I made a booger out of it. And then finish off by sol uh, applying solder to the copper wire. Cleaning up my edges. Thank you. 
So now I'm ready to apply my embellishments, lightly applying the solder to the edges of the piece to give it its organic look. Now I'm going to make the hangers for the pieces. And I'm just making a loop in the wire. I have two rubber pieces of foam that um, I'm going to use for this one. This can be a little bit fiddly, trying to apply the hangers to the pieces. So this is kind of like a third hand. Um, and then I use my tweezers to hold the piece so I don't get burnt. Flux it. I felt that the wire was a little too long, so I trimmed off a little piece of it. And again, this is the fiddly part, trying to get the hangers on without them, you know, falling. So what you want to do is you just want to tack it in place. And then take your time uh, applying the solder to the rest of the copper wire and then coat covering over the two ends that adhere to the pendant with the solder. The trick is not to overheat it so that it, everything comes loose and your hanger falls over or falls off the piece. So. Take your time with it. And then one more round of checking to make sure that everything is covered and your piece is nice and smooth. This one I applied it flat on the flat surface, tacking it, and then applying enough solder to cover the base of the wire.
Now you'll see that I get solder in the center of my loop, which is not desirable. We need the loop to hang the piece. So just heat the solder and it will flow out of it. Again, these applying these hangers are the most fiddly part of making the whole thing. Just trying to get them covered and on in the proper position. And making sure your loop is not soldered over. So in this case, I needed to get the solder out of it. So just heating it up and Pulling it away from it will free it up. Then, of course, I had to go over the piece, make sure that everything was nice and smooth and clean. My embellishments looked right. and making sure that the copper is completely covered. So now I'm going to apply some black patina. No, I'm using the Novacan brand. Um, and oh, first I'm going to make some loops out of some tin copper uh, to be used later to ha hang the uh, pieces on some necklace chains or ribbons, I should say. So I made two loops for those and set them aside. So there's my hope piece. It's completely smooth, checking it over, making sure there's no bits of pokey um, solder. And I'm using the Novacan black patina. And I'm putting some gloves on just to protect my hands. I don't expose my skin to chemicals and just applying it with a paper towel. I mean, you could put it in a little bowl and apply it with a brush as well. Um, I just, this is just quick for me. and Just rubbing it on and making the solder turn black. turning my um, paper towel around and applying new parts of the patina to it, the piece. So I'm taking a red scotch bright pad and just um, buffing the um, solder areas and making it look antiqued. Um, I love the way this looks when it's done. And there 
Where's the hope piece? Done. I forgot to mention that I did clean these pieces before I used the patina. I cleaned them with Dawn dish detergent and a sponge that I dedicate just for stained glass work. And did the same thing to the other two pieces. And there's some views of the Hope piece. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe, and I'm glad that you watched my video to the end, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Oh, I should also mention that these pieces are available for purchase on my website, artbysherylanne.com. Thanks.